Welcome back to Lake Lot Build. My name is John and today's episode is going to be an ERV, which is an energy recovery ventilation. So, uh, let's get started. I'll show you what I have purchased and then we'll go downstairs and I'll show you what I have done so far. This is the box that it came in and the, per the one that I picked out is uh, it was made by Panasonic. And so this particular one is uh, goes up to 100 CFM and um, it is rated for uh, the, about the size of the house that I have, which I am at, um, I'd say around 1900 square feet. So let's talk about the Panasonic uh, ERV. So this is the FV10VE2, which is rated for a climate that is not super cold um, because it doesn't get super cold here. Like if I was up in North Dakota or anything like that, um, it gets down to probably, I think the last few nights it's been around maybe 10, 12 degrees. And um, so, but in the you know in the summer it'll get close to 100 degrees here. So this is the one that I've picked. Right now I can show you outside. It is cold, and we have some snow left on the ground. We are in the middle of winter here, and there is the lake. Sure is still pretty. So anyway, let's go downstairs and I'll show you what I have done so far. Okay, first thing that we're going to go over is the ductwork uh, coming into the house. The second thing we'll do is the transfer of the air through the box, th through the ERV, and then the last thing I'll go over is the ductwork on the out, uh, going to the house and from the house. So first of all, let's talk about the ductwork from outside to the actual unit. I chose the insulated piping here. The reason I've chosen insulated piping is that I have unconditioned air, which could be either super cold or super hot. It could be really humid and it could be not humid, right? So you have a difference from outside to inside. You can get condensation on the piping and there could be different problems that can occur from when you're bringing outside air into the, into the unit before it gets there. And that is the reason I have insulated. Now, the next thing we're gonna go over is the actual unit itself. What I have here is, at the bottom left, is outside air unconditioned that comes through. First stop is the filter. And this is a very, very high filter, which will pull out any of the pollutants or anything, or say pollen, whatever it could be, right? That, that's in your area. The next stop is through the heat exchanger. And I will call this magic. What happens in here is magic because I don't know exactly <clears throat> how it works. But the air then leaves on this side and goes to, that's the supply for the fresh air that goes into the house. Now the air that comes back out will be in this pipe here. Goes through here, gets pulled through here in this way, and then goes out the pipe going to the house, uh, leaving the house. And so you have your cross here, and that's where you have the heat exchange and the humidity exchange so that the air that is coming into the house is matched to the air leaving the house so that you're not bringing in super dry air or super wet air or super cold air or super warm air, right? It could be, it, it tries to match pretty close to the temperature and the humidity that is already in the house. But the only thing that it's, that it's doing is that it's cleaning it. If you have maybe uh, CO2 or radon or VOCs or whatever, uh, or just humidity from running your washing machine or your uh, shower, it's pulling that out and matching it from the outside and so, therefore, you have these exchanges of clean air into your house. So it's consistently, constantly, I should say, cleaning the air that is in your house. And it's very important with a house that's ICF 
that you do this because this house is so airtight. And so that's why it's so important to make sure that you, um, that you clean the air that's going in here. Here we are at the controls. The first one is how often that it will run when it's on. And so right now you can start for every, let's say for every hour, this thing will start at 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40, 50, 60, right? Now you can have an override, which will be these wires here. So let's say I'm gonna take a shower. Well, uh, what I have is a control wire, which is right here. <clears throat> And that's an override and you'll have the button you'll have a button right here and that button will have a timer uh 20 minutes 40 minutes 60 minutes and you just tell it how many how long so when you hit that button it overrides this guy and comes on and it'll come on long enough for whatever that timer is so if that was a switch and you left it on it would just stay on continuous but all my switching will be timers. Okay, the top one is the, the supply air. So it's gonna be this one here, right? And it comes through, and it's gonna be this motor that was back here. So how much air is being pumped into the house? And then the next one is how much air is going to be pulled out of the house, which will be right here, that motor that was right here. And so you can start off by as little as 50 CFM all the way up to 100 CFM. So for me, I'm going to start with them both at 100. And then we'll try to do some balancing to see how it works. But I bought this thing for it to run, right? I want to make sure that we are pulling out the most air and we're bringing in the most air that we can. And so that is the reason why I'm going to have those start those because I can always back it down. The other controller that I'll have will be this one right here. So each bathroom has a controller, right? Now, what we're also thinking about is what if I'm upstairs cooking, right? And I turn on my big exhaust fan up here and I'm cooking, I'm pulling a vacuum on the house, right? So where is this air going to be made up? Well, I have another control here so that I can hit it. So if I'm, say, I'm over here cooking, right, and I turn on my big exhaust fan, I can reach over here, hit that button, and then that allows those vents to open and start bringing air. And so this guy might be pulling a vacuum, and my supply might be pulling a little bit more but it has the avenues to bring fresh air into the house. So older houses, there was enough gaps and everything from either siding or if you don't have spray foam around your doors, everything just kind of, kind of, you know, I would say it like uh, the house breathed, right? And so you didn't have these problems if you turn your exhaust fan that it was going to be pulling air but now houses now have gotten so tight that you really have to figure out if i'm going to pull air out of the house there where is it going to make up the air so let's go back downstairs and uh, show you a couple more items okay so next thing we're going to talk about is this piping I found this piping online. Um, some people hard pipe the whole thing into the house, right? So you'll have straight pieces and curved pieces, right? And, and all those pieces all hooked together. I chose to do what I would call a hybrid. And I'll show you here in just a second as we'll go over to the other side so you can see some better piping. So let's go over there. Okay, let's get down here and I'll show you the tubing that I bought. The, the, camp, uh, the company is called AC Infinity, and this is four inch um, tubing. And you can clearly see it here, it's for air conditioner, heating, and vent. So those parts are the flexible ductwork. Now, the next pieces that I have are the joints. Now the joints I made are the solid pipe, and so let's look at one of those. I'll, I'll show you a T and show you what, how I have this laid out. 
On the left side here is the pipe for the air going back. So that is return. So that is the suck side. So what I have here is, right here is my shower, toilet, and washing machine. And so I put this one, will come out of this soffit right here, or I should say fascia part of it, uh, right there. And so we'll be pulling the air all from this side right here. And then the other pipe is the pipe that is the fresh air, which is going this direction. Now, I wanted a little more separation. I, instead of putting it right there, I've put it over here. And so the pieces that I worked with or that I'm using is a little bit different than like say ductwork that you would have for a standard house. What I have chosen is this piece right here which is an air diffuser. So this piece comes off the face of it. And so you have this piece here. Take this guy off. There we go. So you cut your four inch circle right in your drywall and that slides through. And then on the other side, this piece comes in like that. And that's what clamps on the drywall. And if you want to, it has screw holes. <clears throat> then you can run your screw through the drywall and connect into this to make that a nice rigid fitting. And then of course, let's say, um, well, um, well, your flexible ductwork will go right here on that. And so you can either clamp it with these clamps like that, right? Or you can do the aluminum tape, which is what I chose, which is this. Um, I feel that this makes one, that it's, it's twofold. One, it makes a, a super airtight connection. The other thing is, is that this tape is really sticky and it holds it all the way around uh, and it did a really, really good job. And then of course this is the face plate and the face plate just simply slides in here like that. And then this guy just spins and if you can see it allows how much air to go around this guy. So if you want to spin it down this way less air, right? Or you spin it this way. And then on the back side of it, of course, it has a little set screw in here. And then you can set your set screw. And then once you go in there, and then it's tight. So what all you have is this amount that instead of, you know, a big, long, you know, your four by 10 or whatever your size of your grate that or your diffuser that will be, all you have is this little circle. And I'll show you one that I have. Well, what's going on? Just hanging out here in my floor joist. All right, we're up here in the catacombs. I will uh, show you how this vent works. All right, so this particular one is going to be supplied for my ERV. So that's it right there. Hopefully that light's not bugging you guys too bad. Um, and so this piece has two parts. So this part here, it's going to go up under like that. This piece goes over the top like that. Now, underneath, there's some holes to put screws in so that that, pin that pinches those together. So we'll put one there. Just like that. And I'll go to the other side. Just like that. Now, this guy, of course, just slides in. It's just spring-loaded up underneath there, and that's what holds that in. Now, we need to connect this pipe to it. And now you can see why I have to be on this side, because unless you want to make this hole huge to slide it up in there, that would work. But you have this ring, right? That ring has to clamp on it, so you got to be on both sides of the drywall. So it's a little more cumbersome, but I like it. It works really well. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the end of the pipe, spread all this out. These are nice because I can stick my hand up in here to push that around to spread it because sometimes it wants to fall on the inside. So I just run my finger around it, push it out, just 
just like that. And then I start pushing it on down. Now, some people will take a zip tie or a clamp and clamp that down, which is perfectly fine. But I also want to make mine airtight. And so that way that the pressure, the air comes through here, will make sure I don't lose any air. So I'm going to get that stuck down in there just like that. And then what I do is I'll tape from there out to here so that this is an airtight connection all the way around. The clamp will get you pretty close except for where it goes over the wire and there might be a bleed off there. But this way I know that I'm not losing any CFM. So what I do I'll take little pieces of this, aluminum tape, and I'll start to work my way around like that. And you're thinking, well, this tape's not going to hold anything, but I can tell you this, this tape is absolutely wonderful. I used this when we lived in the Middle East, and it held up in 120 degree ambient air, which meant the air in the crawl spaces or the attic spaces was more like 180 maybe closer. I don't I don't even know. I didn't even want to go up there. I don't know what it is, but it's ridiculous But I needed to take care of some duct work there We used this aluminum tape and the glue was able to survive those temperatures and It doesn't move right. It's not like duct tape of um, or a vinyl or masking where it starts to degrade. So hopefully this showed you how I put it together. And then you try to pull on it and I can literally lift the drywall. It's that strong. So I'm gonna stick it up there and now you know how I put my ERV four inch pipe in my house. The last item that I wanted to talk to you about was actually balancing the machine. And so you have these connection points that are right here. And that's what these little guys are for. I have plugs in them now. But this is uh, the guide for how many, um, when you hook up your little meter to how much fresh air, exhaust air, and all these. So this is how this little deal works. And so for me, I will have to do a little bit more research once the house is completely done and I start to tweak in these things to make sure that we're, if I want to run a little positive on it or a little negative on it. Right now I'm leaning towards, I'm probably going to want a little bit of positive on it because if I run that exhaust fan upstairs like I was telling you about, I want more air coming into the house than is leaving the house. And so, who knows, we'll see how it all plays out. But that will wrap it up for this episode. I want to... Thank you guys for liking and subscribing. Uh, the, it's been a lot of fun reading all the comments from you guys. You know, some of the comments are really, really good uh, because they're things that I haven't thought of, right? Um, what's been really neat is some of the people that, um, some of the comments that I've received on little nuances, little tricks of how to do things. So yeah, you guys keep the comments coming. I love reading them. You know, some people are, some people a little nasty, but you know, it all goes with it. Uh, but for the over, you know, for the most part, everyone has been really nice and had a lot of fun. And I'm really enjoying this. So you guys make sure and like and subscribe and stay tuned. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.